Hi, how you doing? It's Jazz Sinker from SkypeGuitarLessonsOnline.com. This lesson, we are going to be looking at using virtual instruments in Guitar Pro 7. But I thought I would cover how you use the system, or best way of using the system, for creating drum and also keyboard tracks. So first up, we're going to look at the drum track. So I'm going to go to File, New, and we get our Add Track window, and I've already highlighted the drums, and we're just going to use Drum and Drum Kit. So I click Create. And there we have the start of our staff for entering the drum notation information. Now, you can add information via the keyboard, but you will have to know exactly what part of the drum kit you're looking to enter. Now, like if you're like me, you're a guitarist, and don't really have much of a clue on drum notation. So I would show you the best way that I use it. Uh, to enter the information and that's using the virtual instrument. Now to open up the virtual instrument I go across to this icon here at the top right hand which is got a guitar headstock. If you click on that you get a virtual instrument drum kit. And what we've got there is if I hover across each of these different marks is the different part of the drum kit. So I've got a very low tom, low tom, mid tom, high tom, and a high floor tom. Right, I've got all of the various parts of a fairly well complete drum kit. Now, the way we enter that information is just to actually decide what rhythm you're looking at. So if I was going to put a ride symbol, or in fact, let's go for a hi-hat, and I want you to do that across an eighth beat. So I'm gonna click on the eighth note, and I'm gonna find the note that says the hi-hat. Now I've got a closed hi-hat. So I just click on that, and it instantly puts the note onto the staff. Use the right arrow key, and go back to that hi-hat, and click on again. Keep moving it through, and what I'm going to do is just fill the bar up with the hi-hat. Now if I go back to the beginning and play it, you can just about hear the hi-hat. I can use all of these different parts here to start to build up the beat. So if I say wanted the snare on the two, I'm going to go across to side stick, snare. So I'm going to click snare, and I'm also going to put it on the four. So again, I click on the snare. So again, go back to the beginning, click on play. And let's see if I wanted to go for the kick on the one count. And a kick on the four, sorry, on the three. As you can see, not a great drummer. And I can add more of it if I want to change, you know, I could copy and paste. Once I've got my set rhythm that I'm looking for, of course, I could just completely fill it up. And then if I wanted to just put fills into this as I play through, I can do that. Now, so if I wanted to do a bit of a drum roll, let's see if I can program that one in. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna start on here, and I will click across, let's go for the 16th. And I'm gonna do a tom. So I'm gonna go across here for the, the, oop, let's try to move across. Another one, let's go for the mid tom. And then I'll go for the low tom. And let's put one more in there. Let's just see how that sounds. I'm going to delete that rest there. So I've got a little tom line here. Stop that. As I said, I'm not the greatest drummer in the world. You could 
download some files yourself, uh, some from Guitar Pro, look at the rhythms that they've got and you could copy and paste them bring them in and start to change them yourself. So if you've got a drum beat that you think is close to what you're looking for, of course, it's easier just to bring it in and then to slightly readjust it. Uh, but this is how you would enter the information. I find this is the easiest way because unless you are completely confident in drum notation, you're gonna have a problem. And if you're trying to get the drum notation also connected with the keyboard, again, bigger problem. So just having this virtual instrument here is gonna make life a lot easier for you. In fact, let's get this on a very low tom and take it across here. Let's see what I've got. I'm gonna go back up, back up, back up. And we go for that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and put a nice crash on the end of this. So I will go to there and I will put a crash. I know it's probably going to sound absolutely terrible, but let's have a go. Yeah, probably one of the cheesiest drum rolls that you've ever heard. But that's how you can put it together. Uh, to emphasize in the beat, I could put the kick on here, put the kick on here, uh, again, kick on there. You could, if you want, you could uh, go for the crazy kind of death metal drummer on the kick drum, but it would probably be lost in all what's going on in the tom there. So if I put that in there, let's see how this sounds. Kick drum is a bit more rhythm behind that. But I, I'm sure now you can see how you can start to put together probably not the best drum lines in the world. Uh, I'm sure some of the drummers out there are going, what the heck is he doing? But uh, the main thing is you get the idea how you can now enter drum information in Guitar Pro 7. Now, next up, I said about using the keyboards. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to close that window down and I'm going to open up a new track. So I go to track and add. This time I'm going for an orchestral instrument. I'm going to go for keyboard. I'm going to go for an electric piano. So I go create. Now, I've got the usual staff treble and uh, the F clef here. So if I wanted to put the information on here, yes, I could do it via the keyboard, uh, the actual computer keyboard, but I can also go to virtual instrument. And what I've got there, which is a little bit more informative for me, is a piano keyboard. So I can now start to build up chords on here if I want, or melodies. So say I wanted to put in, let's go for a standard C major chord. So we're just going to play through that. In fact, let's make it a little bit good. We'll put in a C major 7 chord. And I want that to last for, let's give it two beats. So the good question is now, why did it go down here? Let's go back and take that out, because I want it to go in the beginning, not the end of the song. Uh, I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to paste it. Now it looks in the right place. Okay. Right. Now we have the C major 7 chord uh, typed in using the keyboard. I'll go across here. I can see the bass. And just a quick note. To put the notes into the G clef, you have to click into the G clef area. If you want to put it onto the bass clef, you have to click onto the bass clef area and then put the notes in. If you do it the other way around and you try to put the bass notes, the bass notes, uh, what I'll just show you, I'm, going to, I'm here in the G clef and I want to add a C in the root here. As you can see, it puts it into the same clef. So we don't want that. We have to go down to here and that's how we apply it. So 
you have to think left and right hand. When you play this, uh, you've got right hand here, left hand there. So I'm going to go on to the next, and how we, let's see how I can move that around. I'm still going to stick because I'm not feeling too adventurous at the moment. And what I shall do, I shall make this even expand that. And I think what I'll do, let's see, I'm going to move from here and I'm going to change to here. And let's see how that sounds. I got the drum beat behind, don't forget, because I programmed that in the drum track. Finishes with a great drum roll at the end of that. And of course, I'm not going to get employed as a keyboard player, if you just noticed. Uh, so, this does enable you to start adding things to the keyboard track. So you can actually layer it down as a keyboard player. It, it is, it is a, a good function where you can lay tracks behind and say, I predominantly use Guitar Pro, Guitar Pro 7, as a teaching bit of software for my students. Um, I don't actually do a lot of transcribing, I just don't have the time. But, there's times when I, I do get some of the files in front of me that are not exactly the way I want them to be. So if I do want to make some changes to it, uh, the drums or the keyboards or any of the orchestra instruments, this is how I do it. It just makes it a little bit more easier for me, especially if I'm thinking keyboard and I'm seeing a keyboard, I, I find it a lot easier to edit and change the information on this. I say I've just built this from scratch, but if you open up a file that's got some keyboard information or a keyboard track on it, then by opening this virtual instrument, as you go across, you'll be able to see the chord. You see when I clicked on it, it opened up the chord. And you see how I moved. Now, that was terrible, that. I should have actually just moved. If I take this across, let's bring this and organize it so the two, I should be up here. So I'm there, there, and there, and that's better. Looks a little bit more organized in that. Every time you pull up a various track in this format, it will change to it. So if it's stringed, obviously you pull in the virtual instrument. So we're gonna add a string track here. And now you've got a guitar. And the same thing again, I can put this information in here. I can go across here onto the two track and I can actually enter information from here. So if I wanted to put in, uh, let's go and just, I'm just gonna show you here how I can just add a scale if I wanted to. So I've gone there, I've gone there, I've gone there, go across here, there, 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 there. And I'm sure if you are a guitarist, you will know that I've just entered the F major scale. Obviously, I would have to change the key signature here. Or well, as you see, we have got that. But I'm sure some of the around and say, ah, no, he's playing modal now. But we're not going to get into that in this lesson. But that's how you can, if you just wanted to build up, instead of using the keyboard to put your information in, you can use this virtual instrument. So you might find this quicker if you just wanted to build a chord up here and you wanted to put in the F major chord or partial parts of the F major chord. Say you wanted to put uh, this into it, uh, slightly change. So you can move things around using this virtual instrument display. So it's a good little function. I, I know this was available in Guitar Pro 6, been available for a while but this is for some people who just possibly got into guitar pro guitar pro 7 and not sure on some of the functions but this is a very easy way of adding the information and if you're tr transcribing you've got your guitar in your hand instead of having to keep letting go and just find the actual number on the keyboard having this virtual instrument in front of you here you can relate straight back to the guitar fretboard well, I do hope this has been of benefit to you. I hope you've learned something from this short little tutorial. If you have, don't forget, click on that subscribe button. Always looking for new subscribers. Hopefully you'll find my channel very useful. But until the next time, 
This is Jeff Sinker from Skype Guitar Lessons Online.com. Thanks for your company. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>